We are joined now by a uh, a good cat, funny guy. He'll be in the fray for the presidency. Although I almost hate to see a guy who's this, uh, uh, seems like this regular guy, good family guy. I hate to see him get into that, but uh, I hope he, you know, I hope he does. But uh, it's it's rough in there. He is Minnesota Governor Tim Pawlenty. Tim, what's up? Well, um, after hearing that commercial for Taxmasters, man, I'm going to get out and buy some. Yeah, you got to you got to protect yourself, baby, because this is <laughs> this is coming down the road. I, I knew that when I saw that they had uh, established a setting the clock back tax, which is their new one, and uh, no doubt they're going to tax that someday. Uh, Gov, how's your life uh, up there, uh, Gov? Well, you know, I just got back, Dennis, from a long weekend in near the Canadian border on Lake Vermilion in Minnesota, fishing, hanging out with the kids, nice. uh, hanging out in the sun. And so I feel uh, tan, ready, and rested. Oh, no, no, that was Nixon's slogan. I better not use that. Sorry. <laughs> what were they biting on up there on Lake Vermilion? <laughs> Well, my wife caught some bass, but we were using some leeches and a jig and a minnow and a little rampola. I was dragging for some northerns, but uh, fishing was a little slow, but the weather was good, and uh, we just were grateful to celebrate our country. We had all these great uh, people up there blowing off fireworks and patriotic folks enjoying their families. But one cool thing, Dennis, bald eagles everywhere fishing in this kind of quiet water, big bald eagle comes down, swoops down, picks up a huge northern out of the water and takes it back up to the nest on 4th of July. I hear a lot of the northern Minnesota bald eagles are now using minoxidil and Rogaine. True? (laughs) (laughs) And they uh, they have lutefisk, so they they stay forever young. As Bob Bob Dylan would sing, and before Rod Stewart kind of ruined it. Beautiful. So they were uh, they were biting on leeches, which makes me want to talk about the federal deficit. <laughs> uh, listen, I hear tell of a transaction tax now one uh, one percent on any transaction in this country that's being floated up there. Uh, Gov, when are they going to get it? We just want everybody to at least freeze spending for a little bit and preferably cut it back. We're spending. To say we spend like drunken sailors is a misnomer because they only spend to get tattoos. We're now paying for tattoo removal. we got to cut it back, don't we? <laughs> well, they put a new tax on the tanning booths. My teenage daughters are outraged. Uh, Unbelievable. To keep them out of those tanning booths. But, yeah, I mean, you raise a serious point, which is it's it's no longer a matter of political rhetoric. It's a matter of junior high math. I mean, you can look at the spending levels. You can look at the revenue levels. The, the, they don't add up. And the, you can't have an economy, private economy, that's not growing at all or barely, and then have government growing two or three or four times faster than that. The math just doesn't work. It hasn't worked in a long time. This current president and administration have put the pedal to the metal and made it exponentially worse. But, you know, anybody who's got, you know, basic math skills can look at what we're taking in versus what we're spending, and it doesn't work. Not just now. It hasn't really worked for decades, does We're talking to Tim Pawlenty, governor of Minnesota. It's like that wonderfully cathartic uh, moment in the great Ivan Reitman, Kevin Klein film, Dave, where Charles Grodin sits down or, or, you know, or uh, Kevin Klein sits down with Charles Grodin and they figure out how to save money on a legal pad. And it's just so common sense. And yet we never go ahead and actually do it. Now, whatever happened to Charles Grodin, now there's a, a voice from the past. He was prominent on the talk, uh, television for a while. He just seems like he's faded away. Have you seen him around? Uh, let me tell you what happened. Charles Grodin happened to Charles Grodin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there's a, there's, a, there's a, a, a distinct half-life on the resonance of the curmudgeon character. <laughs> you go from being the, the lovable curmudgeon to one day, ah, you're cranky, shut up. You know, it, it goes away quickly. Uh, I know that. I've walked on that Walenda-like tightrope for many years. We're talking to Tim Palente, governor of Minnesota. And uh, I'll tell you, Gov, I'm, I'm of two minds on this uh, 010 election here. Uh, I want it to come because I think that there's a scythe like KY Jelly going through KY Jelly coming down in the House of Representatives. But if it doesn't, I'm going to be devastated. I, you know, I'm scared. This won't be the America I know anymore if they don't flip the House. Well, the expectations are really high. And uh, some months ago, I would say it didn't look uh, good for Democrats, and it still doesn't. But we always said, but there's time, you know, things can change. But it's already July, and it's. I, I think we're at the point now where we can be, you know, confident and cautiously optimistic. We still got to do the work and all of that. But I, I would be very surprised if, you know, Republicans and conservatives didn't make major, major progress in the governorships and the Congress. And, you know, there's not that much time left where there's some rampant that can be pulled out of the hat, and the current trend lines would suggest, you know, we're going to be able to at least put a cork in, back in the bottle and, 
and uh, if not, take over the thing. Yeah, well, my, my the main thing that holds me in good stead is a midterm election. The uh, party out of power always gains around 25 to 30 anyway, right? Isn't that the baseline on these things? Yeah, uh, I think it is, and then, but you know, I think it's going to be even more dramatic than that because of the sentiment. And let's face it, you know, President Obama overplayed his hand. He, the country has figured out he is not what he ran on in terms of his tone and his – he ran as a centrist. He used the rhetoric of a uniter, and he's turned out to be a very dangerous movement liberal in my view. And uh, the country has figured this out, and now they're going to course correct. Yeah, I can tell you, uh, Tim, I talk to people every day on this show, and there are good people out there. Nice, common-sense people who now believe this man is sinister. I'm not talking about, uh, you know, blew-up-the-world-trade-center fanaticism. I'm talking about regular people calling in and saying, hey, I don't get this. I, I'm beginning to see a sinister pattern. Yeah, you know, I get two sentiments around. You know, and I, I live in a, you know, what I call a typical area. Yeah. Travel. And you go into VFWs and hardware stores and... You know, the grocery store, I got two major reactions from people. One is on the spending. They just basically say, hey, it ain't going to work. So people have finally figured out that right. deficits matter. It isn't going to work. And the other thing is they feel like they've been bait and switched uh, with Obama, that uh, it is not what they bargained for. It is not what they thought. And some of them, frankly, were either soft Republicans or independents. And now they feel like they've been uh, m- you know, misled and that he's taken off in a very dangerous direction and they feel cheated. Yeah, I also feel they don't feel he's responsible to anybody, because when you look at the fact that this is the most, shall we say, environmentally ardent president in the history of the country, and he has ran smack dab head on into the biggest environmental disaster in the history of the country, and it's essentially, as far as the press goes, on the back burner, I think that's going to come back to haunt him. I think people are thinking, all right, if they're not going to hold his feet to the fire, we are in elections, because this is this is crazy, The the, the little... A toll that's being taken on this man for not honchoing this effort to clean the soil spill up a little quicker. Yeah, you know, as you know, if this would have been President Bush, he would have been. I can't even imagine they would have plugged it with him. They 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 would have put his feet in Billy Bathgate cement and dropped him down there to plug it. (laughs) That's exactly right. But uh, yeah, so Obama's gotten a relative pass on all of that. But uh, the public isn't stupid, and they figured it out. The polls just confirm what you said, and. uh, I think they're going to correct course here pretty quickly. Now, listen, Tim, when you run, and uh, I, I hope you do. I, honest to God, I can look at, look you right in the eye through this microphone if I could see you and say I hope you're our next president. Uh, you you, you got to do something about these debates. You're so common sense, and I think you'd clean this guy's clock when he starts rhapsodizing in a debate. But the moderators play too much of a time. The time limits just say, even if he turns you down, you should say, Mr. President, I want to take two hours one night and put some cam- one camera on us, sit down like the old David Suskind show or something, and uh, you know, and just talk. You and I. Talk. I think it'd be, it'd be even uh, worth considering taking the moderator out of it and just having a direct conversation. Yeah, that's what I mean. No moderator, no time limit. Just say I got one light, one mic, some Charlie Rose table between us. The Amer- it's too serious right now. The American public needs to know where we're at. Let's just sit down, the two of us, and talk for two hours. I think that's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. And then the public could be the referee as to whether one candidate or the other was being, you know, unfair or, you know, took too long or a windbag or whatever. I like that idea. I mean, an egg timer going off when the world's going to hell in a handbasket because you've got some debonair slick there with a journalism degree saying, I'm going to ask a backup quick. Get out of here. I'm not interested in the moderator. I need to know who's going to helm this country. We've stepped in it. We've got to shake it off right now. All right, Palente, I dig the cut of your jib, baby. And, uh... Stay, uh, stay tan, stay rested, because uh, you know the slog's coming down the road, man. <laughs> we'll see about that, Mr. Miller. Wait, 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 the LeBron just signed with the Timberwolves. No, I'm kidding, I'm <laughs> yeah. kidding. Settle down, Timmy, back to earth, back to earth. All right, we'll talk at you down the road. Tim Palente, Governor of Minnesota, thank you for your time.